If you're a freelancer, I want to talk to you about building a successful career that lasts. Hi, I'm Phil Cook, and uh, I'm at the blog philcook.com, P-H-I-L-C-O-O-K-E, where I talk about these issues of leading creatives, being a creative person, surviving at that intersection of faith, media, and culture. And uh, we've been doing a series on creatives and how you survive in the industry. One of the things I want to talk about today is building a sec successful career that lasts. Because let me tell you, creativity is a volatile business. It's a volatile business. There are people that last a long time. There are people that don't last very long at all. And the truth is, I've been in Hollywood since 1991. I was coming out here years and years before that on a regular basis. But we moved, our family moved to Hollywood in 1991. And since that time, I've had a chance to see up and close creative people at studios, at special effects houses, at TV networks, at production facilities, burn out, get frustrated, quit. I know people that were successful directors, film directors who had won awards, but now are managing apartment complexes. I've known people who are brilliant writers, but are now working at Starbucks. I've known people who are tremendous actors, designers, but are now selling real estate. So the question becomes, what is it? What's the difference between a person that succeeds and has a long career and someone who does it. And what I want to focus on today is outside the realm of talent. You know, talent obviously matters, but one thing I've noticed is there are other areas we don't think about that matter just as much. Now, I know that's heresy. I know that's heresy because everybody wants to think talent, everybody recognizes talent. But the truth is, when I was in college, I had a a professor in film school who told me, look, you just become the best director you can possibly be and Hollywood will beat a path to your door. Well, he was an idiot. He was an idiot. He had no clue. I mean, I, I, the one thing you learn when you live in Hollywood, there are incredibly gifted, talented people in this town. My wife, Kathleen, spent many years as an actor. And I would go with her to some of the workshops and the sessions. And she went to a couple schools here in town for long term. And she was working in theater where she won some awards. And I would meet other actors in that group, actors that were incredible, that had amazing gifts and talents for acting. But I realized they're never going to see the light of day. It's not always talent that breaks through because there's so many other factors, particularly in an industry that is driven as hard as this is and so competitive. I mean, every year, thousands and thousands of people descend on Hollywood from film schools all over the country, from design schools, um, just to be in the industry. So keep in mind, talent matters. I'm a big believer that talent is critically, critically important. But there are some other things that you need to understand if you're gonna have a career that lasts. Creative people struggle. And I want to give you four or five things today that will really make a big difference in your career. Number one, find your ultimate niche. Now, find, uh, my British friends say niche, by the way, but uh, find your ultimate niche. And the reason I say this is because one thing you learn when you spend time in Hollywood is, I would go so far as to say at least half, if not the vast majority of people here, aren't doing the job they came to Hollywood to do. For instance, an actor eventually become, may become a casting director. Um, a makeup artist may move into being a production manager. A director becomes a media person at a church or a nonprofit organization and leads them. Maybe a producer moves from making films into producing live events or music. Very often, the thing you dreamed about when you came to Hollywood, you see other pathways and you move into other areas that, that you never dreamed about, that you thought about. So number one, find that niche and have the flexibility of recognizing when a shift happens, you can adapt to that. I, I met a girl that was a screenwriter here in Hollywood and I said, you know what, I, I'd read a couple of her screenplays and she was very dedicated. She worked at Starbucks because she wanted to focus nights on writing time. And so she had a day job to pay the bills and at night she would work on her screenplays. And she was talented, however, the problem was she had no traction. She was just not getting anyone's attention. She was not getting her scripts seen and read by the right people. It was a real struggle. And I said, the truth is you're a terrific writer. You're a great writer. You could actually make a living at writing, whether it's books, whether it's magazine articles, whether it's journalism, whether it's essays, whether it's web content. There's a number of areas where you could actually hone your craft and make a living at it instead of making coffee all day while you're waiting for your breakthrough with your screenwriting career. She said, no, absolutely not. She said, I came to Hollywood to be a screenwriter and that's what I'm gonna do. 
Well, that was a couple years ago, and she's still struggling and working at Starbucks. So I'm not saying that's the wrong strategy. Only she can decide that. However, I'm saying that if you're flexible and open to shifts and changes, now one of the things you have to think about is not getting stuck in one of those eddies. For instance, you may start writing for magazines and realize, hmm, yeah, that's a good career, and, and maybe that's not really what you want to do, but you get stuck there because you refuse to keep going, keep pushing toward the screenwriting career. All I'm saying is be flexible. There were time, I, I taught a UCLA class they, in the UCLA Extension Program here in Hollywood. I taught a class for a number of years on all the ways as a producer, as a filmmaker, you could make a living making short films and video projects until your, your big break comes, until your big Hollywood movie comes, you can actually make a living doing videos for hospitals, nonprofit organizations, churches, synagogues. There's all kind of organizations out there, businesses. I mean, there are major companies today with a full-on television studio and facility built in inside, and they need crew. So all I'm saying is find your ultimate niche. Now, that doesn't mean your dream can't be accomplished but you should be ready to change horses in the middle of the stream. If another opportunity happens running parallel to your dream, consider it, consider it, because it could extend your career rather than having you go sell real estate, rather than having you go sell coffee or go sell insurance or something else. Nothing there's wrong, not that there's anything wrong with those things. In fact, those guys usually make more money than creative people. But the truth is, if your dream is to write screenplays or direct films or produce or act or whatever it is, do it. But look at the opportunities that run parallel that could help your career advance and keep you going. And here's the thing, the industry changes, styles change, people change, trends change. And so what you were doing five years ago may not even exist now, or the way you were doing it, the style you were doing it in may not be appropriate now. So always be ready to adjust, shift, change. It's incredibly important to do. I wrote a book called Jolt. Jolt, um, how to position yourself in a culture that's constantly changing. And I'd encourage you to check it out. It's on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, everywhere, everywhere else. But look for my book Jolt if you struggle with making those kind of changes in your life. I'd encourage you, get it, because it'll really help position you for seeing other opportunities. And while you're trying to achieve that main goal, you can still shift and adjust for a changing industry and a changing world. So number one, find that niche. It may be in the original dream, it may shift, it may move, whatever it is, if you wanna keep your career going, you have to have the ability to change. Number two, constantly question your purpose. Why am I here? Why am I doing this? Why this business? Am I making a difference? Constantly question your purpose. I know people that never question their purpose, never think about that subject. In fact, I have to admit, the team here at Cook Pictures, I drive crazy because I'm always asking those questions. You know, I'll come sit down at the conference table and say, guys, why are we doing this? What are we doing? What's our niche? What's our focus? What's our brand? What's our perception? I always want to know, and I always question, even though we've talked about it for hours and we've come up with what we believe are the right answers, I'm constantly questioning that. Because you know what? As I said before, the world changes. Needs change. The needs of our clients change. The needs of the entertainment industry and the media business all change. Creative needs change. In fact, I wrote my book, One Big Thing, discovering what you were born to do because people don't really understand how to figure it out. What's my purpose in life? What was I born to do? What am I here to create? Why am I here? If you struggle with those questions, if you struggle with, you know, the, the point of my book in many ways was I discovered the people that break through, the people that excel, the people that get noticed and get their work out there are people that aren't pretty good at a lot of things. And I bet most of you listening to this, this program right now will probably think, well, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good at a lot of things, but I'm not sure if I'm stupendous at anything. Let me tell you, start focusing your life on being extraordinary at one big thing. I tell you, it's okay to be okay in a number of things, but the truth is you should focus on one big area, one big thing. And I'll tell you this, when you're constantly asking yourself about what my purpose is, what my mission is here, why I'm here, when you discover your purpose, when you really discover your purpose, it'll be the most motivating thing you will ever do in your life. Because it will release you to let go of all the things that were distracting you, all the things that were holding you back, particularly if you're a people pleaser, which I am, I'm a recovering people pleaser. And I would say yes to things that were diverting me from what my real goal and purpose was. I was just saying yes to everything. 
And I actually need help sometimes saying no. And I have to really think about it. And when I remind myself of my purpose, when I'm constantly questioning my purpose, it reminds me of what my purpose is not. And it gives me the confidence and the courage to be able to say no to those things that I know are not what God's focused me to do, what he's built me to do, and what I'm supposed to do. So always think about that. So number one, remember, find that ultimate niche. It may be a parallel thing. It may be a shift. It may be a slight change in what you thought your dream would be. Maybe you've come to Hollywood and you realize Hollywood is different than I thought it was. Well, guess what? You have to change to the way the industry is, the, in the way the industry works. Uh, when you do that, suddenly things will open up. So find that niche. Really focus on that. And number two, constantly question your purpose. Always be asking, why am I here? What am I supposed to be doing? What's my purpose? It's incredibly, incredibly important. Third thing I would say is keep learning. Keep learning. You know what? If you're not growing, you're dying. Nobody is going to hire someone who was really good at something that was yesterday. How is the industry changing? How are styles changing? How are things, how's programming changes in the filmmaking or TV world? How is design changing in the design world? How does writing changing in the writing world? And it's always changing. Trust me, certainly there are everlasting principles of excellence. There are, there are principles that never die. However, you need to be able to adapt. So constantly be learning. And what I always encourage people to do is become an authority. Find an area in your your specific focus of, you know, whether you're a writer or a designer, a musician, a filmmaker, producer, whatever it is, find an area that you can be the best in the world at. What is that area that you know more about than anybody else? It may be a subject. It may be a style. It could be a budget area, a budget range. It could be something else about your business that you could become well known for, because then whenever people need that, there's going to be one person to call and that will be you. When you start owning a certain area of the business, suddenly you get famous for that. It's just a natural sense of self-performance, or self-promotion, excuse me. I mean, here's the question. Are you the same person you were last year? I don't want to hire the person from last year. I want to hire the person from this year. I hope you're growing. I know many people that have disregarded this at the cost of their career. People who were doing really, really well in the industry five years ago. Today, they're out of the industry completely. They got out of the loop. They just got out of, they weren't paying attention to changes that were happening. So constantly be growing. Are you reading industry magazines? Um, certainly those can be boring. However, it keeps you abreast. It keeps you up to date on what's going on. Are you looking at industry websites? Are you reading? Are you studying? Are you learning what's going on out there? Remember, if you're not learning, you're dying. I can't say that enough. You're either learning or dying. There is no middle ground. Oh, Phil, I'm not a reader. I don't care. Read. Get up on stuff. Attend conferences. Listen to podcasts. Find people that are smarter than you and grow and learn from them. I'll tell you, that's, that alone separates people in this industry. It really does. In the creative world, the people that are constantly growing and people that have, you know, have settled, that's a whole different group. And you want to hire people that are constantly growing. And the last thing is evaluate and think about what value you bring to your employer. Now, you're free, if you're a freelancer, you may not think I have an employer, but the truth is, you got, not only do you have a boss, you have multiple bosses. You have multiple clients. You're probably developing or working on multiple projects. What value do you bring to them? It could be an ad agency. It could be a nonprofit organization, a studio, a church, a nonprofit, whatever. You have a boss, and you have an employer. If someone's hiring you, the question you need to constantly ask is, what value am I bringing to the table? Question that value. It's so important because if you can't identify it, they can't identify it. And believe me, that's a question they're constantly asked. Every time they write that check to you, they're running through their mind. Now, what am I buying with this check? What's the value this check is bringing me? So very important. So let's think about this. Outside of talent, four things you need to think about to make a career that lasts. Number one, find your niche. Whether changes happen in the industry or not, be able to adapt, be able to adjust. Maybe you're an actor and you need to shift to being a casting director for a while. Uh, maybe you're a producer and you need to produce for a hospital promotional video or go in the commercial business or go into the nonprofit world for a while as you wait on your big film to happen. Adjust, adapt, be able to switch horses in the middle of the stream. Number two, constantly question your purpose. 
I'm telling you, this is what keeps you on edge. This is what keeps your talent up there. Constantly question your purpose. Why am I here? Why do I do this? Your brand, the meaning you bring to who you are and who you represent is important. And I mentioned my book, my book, One Big Thing. I tell you, you should get this book because it'll really help you identify what that thing is that you excel at, that thing that you're better than everybody else that you could potentially be known for. Number three, keep learning. I'll tell you, I can spot in a minute the people in this industry. I go to Hollywood parties, Hollywood conferences, Hollywood events and movie screenings. And you know, somebody that comes up to me and talks to me in two minutes, I can tell you if they're learning or if they're settling. If they've pretty much got it figured out and they're just coasting, they're not gonna get hired. They're gonna, their, their career is gonna eventually run out. But the people that are learning are adapting and growing. They're the people clients and employers and studios wanna keep on the payroll. And then number four, constantly evaluate the value you bring. You know, as creative people, we don't think about that a lot. We don't think a lot about the value we bring, whether it's a studio or a TV network or a nonprofit organization or church, whatever. Whoever we're working for at the time, what's the value that we bring to that relationship? That's incredibly important because I said, as I said before, they're thinking about it, so you should be thinking about it. And so let me say, these four questions are not four things to run through your mind every five years to evaluate and kind of catch up. These are things that should run through your mind constantly, weekly, maybe even daily. This is a world and an industry that is changing so quickly we need to be evaluating what we're bringing to the table and how we're adjusting if we're going to make our career last. The bottom line is, don't be a one-hit wonder. Start now building a career that lasts. I'm Phil Cook. I'd love for you to continue this conversation. I'm talking about this and other things that are similar over at my blog at philcook.com, P-H-I-L-C-O-O-K-E. I'm Cook with an E, dot com. Love to talk to you about all these and other issues about taking your career to the next level. Remember, do not be a one-hit wonder. Start now building a career that lasts. <laughs>